Good morning, everybody. We'll call to order the Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection for purposes of hearing a number of items that have been posted on today's agenda. Uh, I am joined by Senator Nishihara here in Conference Room 229. And on uh, Zoom, we have Senator Favela, Senator Riviere, Senator Decoit, and some folks that will be joining us to testify, and Senator uh, Joy San Buenaventura from Hawaii Island has just joined us as well. So we are ready to rock and roll. The first item on our agenda this morning to be heard is Senate Bill 2494. This is relating to residential landlord tenant code and uh, prohibits landlords from requiring possession of a dwelling if the habitability of the premise is significantly impaired. Uh, we have first um, Stephen Levins from DCCA, Office of Consumer Protection. Good morning, Steve. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Steve Levins from the Office of Consumer Protection and we'd like to stand on our written testimony and support. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We have a uh, testimony from the Hawaii Association of Realtors. Is Mr. Hiraki on the phone? They submitted testimony in opposition. Nanea Lowe in support. Uh, late testimony from David Chi in opposition and late testimony from Kari Hingdon in support. Anybody else on the call? that wishes to offer comments on Senate Bill 2494. Seeing none, members will move forward in the agenda and go to Senate Bill 2877, also relating to the Residential Landlord Tenant Code. This is uh, allows a landlord or agent to charge an application screening fee at the time of a rental application is processed for a residential property caps the amount of the application screening fee at $25 and prohibits fees to be charged for each member of a household. Uh, requires the agent to present a receipt um, and requires the landlord or agent to return any unauthorized fee amounts to the applicant. Um, Mr. Levins. Uh, good morning again. And again, I would stand on my written testimony and support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Scott Morishiki, Governor's Coordinator of Homelessness. Uh, good morning, Chair. I stand on my written testimony and support. Thank you for your opportunity to testify. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Hawaii Association of Realtors, Mr. Hiraki in opposition. Uh, Partners in Care, Laura Thielen. Okay. You're not Laura, but uh, your Partners in Care. Unmute yourself and uh, Provide your testimony. I, uh, thank you, chairs and members of the Senate and House Committee. Um, partners in care uh, would just, we stand on our written testimony and would just like to highlight that uh, it's, it's, often, um, a, it's, it's often a huge burden when, when, when people are needing to uh, submit multiple uh, application fees at multiple sites. And so, you know, we, we just want to highlight that we're okay with, with the fees. We, we just want them uh, paid at the time that, uh, that someone is actually considered. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Betty Lou Larson, Hawaii Catholic Charities. Or Catholic Aloha. Charities Hawaii. Yeah. Good morning. I'm Betty Lou Larson with Catholic Charities. And we also want to highlight that we feel it's a severe burden if these fees are charged up front at the type of application when the person may never be considered or may not have a chance. So the compromise is to allow it at the time of screening. And we feel that there has to be some regulation of the number of fees and the amount of fees because it's all over the place as far as what's being charged. And this gives people a chance, especially lower income people, a really chance to apply to multiple places. And as you know, with the scarcity of affordable units, you have to apply to many places in order to have a chance to actually get one. So if it can only apply to two or three because of a financial burden, that's a hardship. And that can lead people who are at the risk of homelessness to become homeless. Or of course, people who are homeless have a very difficult time to find that housing. So we thank you um, for looking at this bill. 
Okay, thank you, Betty Lou. Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center, Nikos Leverens. Nikos, are you on the call? Uh, good morning. Yes, uh, we'll stand on our written testimony and support. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Members, that's all of the testimony that uh, has been submitted. Is there anybody else on the call who wishes to offer comments on Senate Bill 2877? Uh, members, any questions for any of our testifiers? If not, let's go forward to Senate Bill 2399 relating to rental discrimination. This prohibits discrimination in a rental uh, tra transaction based on participation in any government rental sector. Uh, assistance program like Section 8. It includes uh, low-income housing assistance under the United States Housing Act as well. Uh, we have on the Zoom, I believe, Mr. Hoshijo, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. Morning, Chair and members. Uh, Bill Hoshijo for the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. Uh, the HCRC supports uh, this bill and stands on our written testimony for the reason summarized in the last paragraph of our testimony. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have State Council on Developmental Disabilities. Is Daintree on the call? She submitted testimony in support. Uh, we have the Hawaii Pacific, I I'm sorry, Hawaii Public Housing, Hakeem. I, morning, I believe Chair. I see Hakeem there. Yes, aloha, morning. good morning. Hope you are all well and safe. Uh, we stand in strong support of this measure and as an agency who administer the Section 8 and see the, uh, the horrors and despair in, in folks that have Section 8 voucher, but yet they cannot have housing because uh, of the perceptions out there. Uh, we uh, urge this committee to push it through, and I'm here for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Okay. I just want to remind everybody that's testifying on the Zoom get close to your microphone or elevate your voice because we're having some difficulty hearing you. Uh, next uh, testifier is uh, the governor's coordinator on homelessness, Scott. Good morning, chair and members. I stand my written testimony in support and note that this addresses a very critical upfront barrier to, ex to accessing um, our existing housing inventory. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you, Mr. Morshige. Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center, Trisha Kajimura. Oh. Trisha, are you on the call? I can do it on behalf of HCRC, Madam okay. Chair. Uh, my name is Nikos Leverage with Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction in strong support of this bill. And I'll note that Rhode Island uh, recently prohibited income source discrimination uh, this past year. Uh, mahalo. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kona Hawaii Initiative, Gary Hooser. Is Gary on the call? He submitted testimony in support. Why Children's Action Network speaks. Nicole Wu. Is Nicole on the call? She submitted testimony in support. Uh, Partners in Care. Do we have somebody representing Partners in Care on the call? If not, that was testimony in support. Uh, Betty Lou Larson, Catholic Charities Hawaii. Oh. Good morning, Betty uh Lou. Uh, the partners in care just came on the picture, but I'll talk now. Um, we consider this to be a real essential bill to help our citizens get affordable housing. Um, we also feel that this bill is very straightforward and clear language. So it outlines not only what is needed by the, for the tenants, but also for the landlords. And that's important that both sides understand what the law is. Uh, we help many struggling families. And when they win, when they get Section 8, it's like winning the lottery. Now they have hope. Now they can feed their families. Now they can feed themselves if it's an elderly. Now they can, you know, educate their kids and have a future, but it's so difficult to use it that many just give up or they just can't find a place over months and months. So we really feel that this bill would be a good bill to move forward and to really bring um, some relief to our families and to be clear to landlords what is required. Thank you for listening to this bill. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction, Nikos. Are you on the call? Offered testimony in support? Yes, support, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hawaii Association of Realtors, opposition, Shannon Ru Rudolph, is Shannon on? Testimony in support. 
uh, late testimony from David Chi in opposition and late testimony from Lori Kingdon. I'm sorry, Hingdon. Hen Higan. Higdon, H-I-G-D-O-N. My apologies, Lori, for messing up the name. Uh, anybody else on the call wishing to offer comment on Senate Bill 3, 2399? If not, members, any questions yes. for any of our testifiers? Senator Sun, one of the Yes, thank you. Um, Scott, Murshiga, are you still on? Yes, there he is. Okay, thank you. So um, I read your written testimony and you referred to an example of 708 emergency housing vouchers being allocated since mid 2021 and only 36 households having been leased. What happened to the other 690 people, I mean households? So there's individuals that are still searching um, for housing and vouchers that are still in the process of being um, assigned to individuals that are referred for that particular program. And I know that just a, as just one example, that we have a unprecedented, unprecedented level of financial resources coming into our community. And the reluctance to rent to people receiving housing assistance from programs like that really impact our ability to effectively utilize these resources. And if we're not able to use them now, are within a specified period of time. I think it not only impacts, you know, the people who could potentially be matched up with those vouchers, but there's a bigger impact to our community that we're potentially um, missing out on benefits that are available to address us now. Are they stressing our um, ho homeless shelters or, or do you know? So right now, um, homeless outreach workers and shelters are starting to see people who are um, falling into homelessness who are recently evicted. Some of them you know, may be eligible for programs such, such as this. And because we're not able to quickly match people into housing when they do have a voucher or resource, and because you have such a limited time to locate housing if you're assigned a voucher, we need to look at every possible way just to maximize our use of these resources. And I, I want to add that I think looking at implementing policies to address this type of discrimination is just one piece of it. And there's other bills moving through the legislature now that would establish incentives for landlords. We're also looking at other programs that would add additional um, housing development because we have to address this through a multi-pronged approach. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Members, any other questions? If not, let's move forward to Senate Bill 2685 relating to planned community associations. This establishes requirements for cumulative voting and the removal of directors of planned community associations, exempts such uh, associations from certain requirements regarding cumulative voting for and the removal of directors under the Hawaii Nonprofit Corporations Act. Uh, we have testimony from Mike Galoyo for Alehua Townhouse Association. Is Mike on the call? He's testifying in support. Uh, LAC CAI, Larry McGuire. Not present, Chair. In support. Uh, Hawaii State Association of Parliamentarians Legislative Committee, Mr. Glanstein. Good, good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and, and committee members. We have testimony in support, and I'll just briefly summarize that we are supporting uh, Senate Bill 2685 with amendments. It contains much of the information to uh, that was already worked out in 2020 before the uh, the shutdown. The host has asked me to start my video, so I'll say good morning, everybody. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Madam Chair. Hawaii Council of Community, Jane Sugimura. Is Jane on the call? Testimony in, support. Testimony in support, uh, Legislative Action Committee, CAI, Hawaii Chapter, Mark Hagadon, Hagadon. In support, uh, Dale Head, in opposition, is Dale on the call? Not present, Chair. Okay. We also have written some testimony submitted um, from Jeff Sedino, Support from Ann Anderson, support from Richard Emery. 
Anybody else on the call wishing to offer comments on Senate Bill 2685? If not, members, any questions? Let's move forward to Senate Bill 2730. Why is it not moving for me? Um, okay, 2730, you're going to need to bring me a, a, an agenda because for some reason this is not moving forward. Okay, 2730 is relating to condominium associations, requires that fees for attorneys retained by a condominium association be paid from an association's funds or reserves, limits the total and final legal fees to 25% of the original debt amount, requires attorneys retained by a condominium association to confine their communications to the condo board, except when the attorneys must request and require materials and responses directly from owners for each matter, prohibits attorneys retained by a condominium association from billing unit owners directly. Um, we have lots of interesting testimony uh, from Mike Galoyo Sr., Palaihua Townhouse Association in opposition, Hawaii Council of Community Associations, Jane Sigmora in opposition, Legislative Action Committee of the Community Association Institute, John Morris. Is John on the call? Uh, Law Offices of Mark K. McKellar. Is Mark on the, on the call in opposition? Uh, Country Club Village, Dante Carpenter in opposition. Uh, Kokua Council and Hui O-E-I-E-O. -E Lourdes Scheibert. Is uh, Lourdes on the call? in support, Grant Oka, Marilyn Joyce Oka, Lynn Matasso in opposition, Dale Head in support. Dale, are you still there? Uh, Larry Beret in opposition, Marsha Kimura. Marsha, are you on the call? Jeff Sadino, are you on the call? Those are both in support. Um, yes, I am on the call. Okay, Jeff, would you like to offer some comments? Um, yes, good morning, Chair Baker, Vice Chair Chang, members of the committee. My name is Jeff Sedino. I'm a condo owner. Um, I work as a financial planner and I strongly support this bill. 100% reimbursement of attorney fees makes it too easy to target owners who are vulnerable to exploitation. This happened to me with devastating effects. On March 15th, 2019, I was one day away from going bankrupt and losing my home because of the eagerness of my association to re, uh, refer me to their attorneys and their attorney fees. The cause of this is that I was unlucky to find myself in a disagreement with my board over the replacement of my kitchen cabinets. Instead of following the violation procedures in our governing documents like they should have done, the board immediately sent me to their attorneys. Their attorneys sent me multiple demand letters and filed a lawsuit against me. But when they realized that I could afford an attorney to respond to their lawsuit, they stopped their harassment and they never again tried to pursue their claims against me. They just walked away and left their claims completely abandoned. But the damage was already done. I spent $18,000 to pay for my attorney and to pay for their five different attorneys. The end effect is I found myself one day away from going bankrupt and losing my home. And it was all completely unnecessary. So to summarize, the current law of 100% reimbursement of attorney fees is extremely harmful to individual owners because it gives the board and managing agent too much power that they have abused and it creates a culture of negligence against owners. Please protect us, please pass this bill. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. I see that Marsha Kimura is on the Zoom. Marsha, did you want to offer some comments as well? Uh, yes, please. I, I Originally, I don't think you could have heard me. Something was wrong with the, the mic, I guess. Um, okay, good morning, Chair Baker, Vice Chair Chang, and CPN Committee. 
members. Thank you for granting this hearing of SB 2730. First, I ask that it be amended to delete the word not on page four, beginning of line 12, because it's inappropriate in the context of this bill. I believe that the passage of this bill should be based on these unshakable truths. Number one, when condo boards hire attorneys, the association is the attorney's client responsible for paying the attorney's fees, regardless of the purchase, the purpose of the legal hire. Two, legal costs the association or an owner pays are recoverable by the prevailing party in legal archives, but the boards cannot rightfully decide this themselves by demanding reimbursement beforehand from an owner. And three, as regards the 25% attorney collection fee limit, limit on total and final charges based on original principal balances, HOA fees are a consumer debt covered by the Federal Debt Collections Practices Act and by its Hawaii offshoot HRS 443B9, which states that attorneys as collectors are bound by this limit and must collect their fees by filing them for them in court. You know, the fact is association boards have abused the use of attorneys, for example, to retaliate against or silence owners. Arguably, boards would never allow legal charges to reach the amounts that cause some owners to lose their homes if their associations were rightly held responsible for the legal bills their directors incur. I ask with sincere conviction that your committee progress this bill toward progress. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marsha. Uh, we have Paul Ireland uh, Kaftanov. Good morning, Chair Baker, uh, Vice Chair Chang, and members of the committee. Uh, I'm in a condominium unit owner, and I'm also an, an attorney who represents community associations in Hawaii. I do stand on my written testimony, but I also want to say that if this measure passes, it would be very unfair to condominium associations and their members. Uh, as it would not only remove the ability of an association to seek reimbursement of attorney's fees incurred when an owner defaults or breaches on their obligations to the association, it would also make it very or it's completely ineffective to retain legal counsel. Uh, in particular, this measure would make it illegal for an association's attorney to talk to any other person other than the association's board of directors when representing this association. Uh, except with one very confusing and arbitrary exception, which would be for the purpose of requests and responses for essential requirements of each matter. Um, essentially, this measure would make it impossible for an association's attorney to assist in resolving legal disputes with owners, and it would thereby deprive associations from having access to our justice system because their attorneys would not be able to communicate with anyone other than a board of directors. On the other hand, this measure will likely result in an unconstitutional infringement on a lawyer's, lawyer's right to free speech. This measure would also remove the, uh, the effectiveness of contractual and statutory rights that associations have, uh, as well as owners, to recover attorney's fees in cases where there is a prevailing party. This will make it very difficult for associations and owners uh, to cover their attorney's fees. For associations, attorney's fees are often an unbudgeted expense. If an association is not able to recover its attorney's fees from an owner who violates the same, the association members will probably see increases in assessments to cover the attorney's fees. Uh, generally, if an association has no choice but to go to court with its claims against an owner, it can become costly, especially in contested cases. Uh, so in such cases, it is essential for an association to be able to recover attorney's fees, especially when the attorney's fees were incurred as a result of an owner's default or breach of the association's project documents. So in this case, if associations are not able to recover their attorney's fees, uh, it will result in creating unfair cost barriers to associations being able to access the judicial system. So for these reasons, this measure should not pass and I respectfully request that your committee not pass this measure. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, also in opposition, Philip Nerney, R. Larry McGuire, Michael Eisen, Christian Porter, Mary Freeman, uh, Mark Hagedown, Chandra Kanimaru, Steve Glancy, 
uh, Lance Fujisaki, uh, in support, Lila Maurer, in opposition, Ann Anderson, in support, Harindra uh, Panalal. Is that individual on the Zoom? Uh, not present, Chair. Okay. And we also have opposition from Richard Emery. Is there anybody else on the call wishing to offer comment on Senate Bill 2730? Members, any questions of any of the Thank folks you. that are on the call? Senator San Buenaventura. Thank you. So um, the last person to testify, I think, is an attorney for the association. And I apologize, I can barely read your name on the Zoom. I think that's Paul Caltro. Okay, so my question is this. I believe this bill addresses um, what other testifiers were talking about, which is um, potential abuses. And since the testifiers are also condo owners, they will be also indirectly, um, you know, penalized if the associations end up having to pay the fees, right? So my question is, what about amending this bill to only allow for attorney's fees and costs beyond 25% only upon approval of the majority of owners? Would that satisfy, it sounds like it's something that would satisfy both the potential abuse that the owners are talking about and the potential abuse by attorneys that may be charging or not necessarily attorneys because I'm an attorney myself, but by, their, um, by the board in prolonging litigation when there's no need in sight. Is that something that you would agree to? Uh, good morning, Senator San Buenaventura. I think that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but the question you're asking is whether I think association members should have the ability to approve association attorney's fees before they're incurred. I'm not Beyond sure if that's 25%. what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think that that would be very um, difficult for, for the business functions of associations. Um, be, to be able to collect uh, un, unpaid assessments. And it would also, if we're talking about unpaid assessments, because in each case you'd have association members seeking uh, to approve or disapprove the collection of attorney's fees against other individual association okay. members. I, I so don't, what, based on my okay. understanding of your question, I, I don't, yes, I'm not yes. seeing that as a, you know. Yes, I, I see what you're talking about. But what if it is, okay, let me just tell you what I'm thinking about. I remember reading on CNN, a Florida condo owner who was um, assessed by the association for leaving his shoes outside his condo door because it was a violation, it was a technical violation, okay? And basically, and he provided the condo owner with a letter from his doctor saying that he is allergic to some, some kind of pollen. So the, the recommendation was that all shoes, and it's a very common Hawaii thing, to leave the shoes outside the condo door. The, associate, the board member, for some reason, refused to accept the doctor's letter. And they went all the way up to almost the Supreme Court. The Department of Justice came in and actually started suing the association. So as a condo owner of two condos, I don't want my association and my fees going up because some condo board member decided to pursue this guy for, to me, Manini stuff, okay? And the DOJ got involved. How do we limit that kind of abuse by condo board, by condo board members who for some reason want to go after a violation unless we provide something that requires the majority of association members to approve um, attorney's fees beyond 25%.
Well, I, I don't think that attacking attorney's fees is going to be the way to resolve legal disputes between condominium associations and their unit owners. Like you, Santa, Senator San Buenaventura, I'm also a condominium unit owner. My neighbors often leave their shoes outside on their, on their front door. I personally don't have a problem with it, um, but uh, there, are, there are ways to resolve disputes that the legislature has provided for, for condominium unit owners and associations alike. Uh, I've discussed those ways in my testimony, my written testimony that includes mediation. Mediation can be a very cost-effective way for resolving disputes between uh, condominium unit owners and, uh, and an association. So I often would encourage it. Um, there's also arbitration, which can be used to avoid court. Um, but short of uh, banning associations from seeking any legal re relief whatsoever, which is I think what this bill would ultimately result in, um, I, I, don't, I don't really see a way for the, the legislature to um, strike a balance on a, on a case by case basis. Um, if you're going to refer to fair housing cases, the, the government does provide relief to consumers and condominium unit owners who have, um, who seek reasonable accommodate, requests for reasonable accommodations to their policies and procedures implemented by an association. So, I mean, that, that sounds like a very successful case, actually, the one that you raised for those unit owners because they were able to prevail in the end. And um, let's, let's look at the fee shifting statute too in 514B-157. If it says if a claim is not substantiated by a condominium association that the unit owner may get their attorney's fees, that's a very important provision. And I think that that does strike a balance in these cases. Um, but in, in cases where owners are complaining about the amount of attorney's fees, uh, I think that the measure there is reasonableness. We don't get 100% awards of attorney's fees. A court can determine the reasonableness of an attorney fee. And that's if, if it's disputed, that's usually how it's going to be resolved is by seeking a court determination. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I have okay. no further questions. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, members? Hi, Chair. Uh, I do have a testifier from earlier who was not able to speak, uh, Laura Schubert. Sorry if I um, mispronounced. It's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Who is, who is Laura Schubert? Okay. Laura, do you want to add some testimony? Yes, I would. Um, are you able to hear me? You need to get closer to your microphone. Okay. Um, Okay, so I did submit and stand on my test written testimony. Um, I, I believe that um, the small Manini type of, of fines that are, are um, placed upon an owner usually stem from house rules violations. I, I feel that those small um, fees should be carved out of the necessary um, attorney's fees that need to address major assessment violations of non-payments. Uh, I, can, I can understand that. But I think a lot of the complaints and disputes from reading back all the way back to 1984 and in a lot of research papers stem from misunderstandings between the owner who really doesn't educate themselves and then the board members who really, really don't educate themselves. And then you become a, a, a big tangle mess in a community full of disputes and discontent. And I just believe that if you would consider carving out the very small Manini um, fines and and kept attorney's fees at 25%. That would be in line with Marcia Kim, Kim, uh, Kim, Marcia's testimony on federal um, collection practices. So that's what I'd like to offer you. I, I found that doing research all the way back to um, 1991 with Gregory Tanaka and <clears throat> offered an insight for me in um, condominium self-governance and the board and he offers the board structure itself may be an underlying source of many disputes 
I believe the small fines should be considered by the board of directors on a, on a level at their level to interact with, with the owners and keep these fees out of the courts and keep the fighting lower and, and the disputes is really bad. People start to hate each other. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lourdes. Anybody else wishing to offer comments? If uh, not, I would. Yes. Hello. Who's um, that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I don't recall the, the name of the, the condo owner attorney, but I'm going to get a little bit into people's faces here. You know, the fact is, I what it, from my observation and that of others too. You know, the these boards and their associations want to avoid court proceedings as much as they can so that they can hide the fact that they have been abusing the charging of these legal fees of, of the reasons some home, home homeowners are behind in their are defaulting in their maintenance dues because of these trumped up charges that they they've levied against owners what about addressing all that you know i you know we only can address what's on the table in this measure we cannot address every conceivable okay. right. issue that might come up with a condo association and i live in a condo and i understand a lot of what you're saying but we can only address what's before us okay i'm i as i tried to do in my um message a few minutes ago it's a hard and hard and core i mean it's a hard fact that the fdcpa and its hawaii version of it expressed in hrs 443b9 states that attorneys are collectors they are collectors and they are bound by a 25 percent limit on original balances and they haven't been doing that we had, that's, that is what we see in people losing their homes and that further unfair procedure of, of non-judicial foreclosure where it's the whole thing is done out of court and all of a sudden a homeowner has lost his, pro his or her property because of the tremendous legal fees. This is what, this is what the, exactly what the bill is addressing. And I don't think that, that there, there's any getting around that, that, you know, the rule is 25%, a 25% cap, period. And what makes them an exception, these condo attorneys? Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to offer comments on this measure? Any questions from members? If not, let's take a quick recess and we will come back for decision-making. Recess. <laughs> Okay, we'll call the uh, Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection back to order. And for the purposes of decision-making, uh, members, let's start with Senate Bill 2494 relating to the Residential Landlord Tenant Code. Um, this goes from our committee to JDC. Um, the recommendation that the chair would like to offer is to pass it with amendments by adding this language, the tenant and landlord cooperate to allow for the restoration of the rental unit to habitable condition and the tenant continues to pay rent equal to the fair rental value of the premises or the agreed upon rent, whichever is less. Um, there are no texts in this measure. Um, if that works for folks. Any, any issues or concerns? Uh, no, I think that's a good amendment, Chair. Okay. Let's, uh, recommendation then of the Chair is to pass Senate Bill 2494 with amendments. Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator DeCoy. Aye. Senator Nishihara goes aye. Senator Revere. Aye. 
Santa de San Ventura. Aye. Santa Favela. Reservations. Okay, thank you, members. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is Senate Bill 2877, also relating to the Residential Landlord Tenant Code. Uh, it goes from us to JDC, um, adds a new section to the HRS regarding application screening fees. Um, there are no technical issues. The chair recommends that we pass this measure unamended. Any questions or concerns? If not, chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator Goy. Aye. Chair goes aye. Senator Revere. Aye. Senator San Ventura. Aye. Senator Ferrara. Reservations. Motions adopted. Okay, thank you. The next item on our agenda is Senate Bill 2399 relating to rental discrimination. Uh, this prohibits discrimination based on the person uh, participating in any government rental assistance program. Um, adds a new section to the HRS uh, described as rental discrimination based on source of income. Chair recommends we, uh, there are no texts uh, in this measure. Uh, Chair recommends that we pass this measure unamended. It goes on to JDC. Any questions or concerns? Not. Uh, Chair votes aye. Members of the President, uh, any voting with reservations or in opposition? Seeing non motions or not. Uh, the next item on our agenda is Senate Bill 2685 relating to planned community associations. This measure also goes to JDC. Um, Chair recommends that this, this establishes requirements for cumulative voting. Uh, Chair recommends that we pass this with tech amendments uh, that were offered by Steve Glanstein and HSAP, uh, some non-substantive wordsmithing. Any questions or concerns? If not, the recommendation is to pass 2685 with those tech amendments. Chair votes aye. Of the members present, any voting with opposition or reservations? Seeing none, motions adopted. Um, Senate Bill 2730. Uh, this requires that fees for attorneys retained by condominium associations be paid from association funds or reserve uh, Lizit limits some fees to 25% um, um, of the original debt. Um, I believe this was the one that we had an awful lot of discussion on. Chair was intending to defer this measure indefinitely. However, uh, Senator San Buenaventura, you had some amendments that would make this measure acceptable? Uh, yes, that any Basically, my request is that the, that the measure be amendment to be amended to allow for legal fees beyond 25%, but only upon approval by the majority of homeowners in a, in a regularly conducted meeting. Okay. Uh, Chair uh, would accept that and recommend that we pass this measure with amendments. Uh, is that acceptable to the committee? If you are happy. Anybody? Okay. Um, any comments from the committee before we take a vote? Um, wasn't there, oh, Chair Revere, didn't you also want another amendment regarding the minor violations? Well, yes, I, I think it would be appropriate um, to have a, a threshold and um, that below a certain threshold, um, you, you could not sick the attorneys, you know, to, to collect the fees. I, I think that it is uh, kind of an abusive situation if, you, if you're making people defend themselves legally for, for smaller claims. So if there is an appropriate dollar amount um, before uh, associations can act through their attorneys, I think that would be worth considering. And I would support that. So I, I would also support an amendment that says that any 
violation of less than $2,000 shall not incur attorney's fees beyond 25%. Okay, Would that does that work for you, Senator Riviere? Yes, I think that would be, a, that's a good amendment, thank you. Okay, this is a single referral to CPN, so I wanna make sure we get it in as good a shape as possible. Uh, so why don't we take those uh, amendments? Let's put a um, defective date on it so that uh, we know that it, when it crosses over to the house, because uh, it's, a, as I said, it's a single referral to us, uh, then they will know that they cannot just automatically pass it. Uh, I will note just for everybody's information that um, our vice chair submitted this and it's a companion from uh, a bill that's being submitted in the house by the speaker. So we, we could have some very interesting discussions in conference uh, unless they accept our amendments. Uh, any, any other comments or questions on this measure? If not, then the recommendation is to pass Senate Bill 2730 with the amendments that uh, Senator San Buenaventura outlined. Any, and also recommended by Senator Rudier. Chair votes aye. Of the members present, any voting in opposition yeah. with reservations? Reservation. It voted, thank you. Okay, members, this brings us to the end of our schedule today. Thank you so much for joining us and providing your thoughts and comments. We are adjourned. Thank you.